Hey everyone, Colton Carnival here with Fast Graphs. So we're gonna take a minute to take a look at Tesla and see how Fast Graphs can really speed up your investment process, especially when looking at a company like Tesla. Right now we're looking at an adjusted operating earnings graph of Tesla with some estimates in here. And as we can see, Tesla has been in negative earnings for a while and then starting in 2020 is when they really started to have positive earnings. But, you know, they are a growth company and their earnings are growing, but that doesn't mean that earnings are necessarily the best representation of valuation for a company like this, especially when we're trading at a 76 times earnings. That means in order to really find a return from those earnings, we're gonna have to experience some extremely large growth rates of earnings over a long period of time, and you could be extending out your investment process for years to come before you really start to see safer returns. But we can also take a look at a couple different metrics like EBITDA and sales, some more top line numbers of this company. So looking at it from a few years seven years of history that's going back from 2018 all the way to 2025 with estimates we can see a massive acceleration in growth starting in 2021 so we had 10 percent growth five percent growth and this is sales per share that we're looking at and then all the way up up to 64 percent 48 percent and then projecting close to 30 percent growth for the next few years that's putting the normal price to sales ratio at a 10.15. That's what this stock has normally traded at over the last few years, which could be slightly high. I mean, you are still paying a premium valuation at that point, but you are experiencing an extremely large amount of growth in the top line of this company. And as like I said before, top line numbers are what you kind of need to look at when you're looking at a newer company that is just starting to really work into its profits and even before profits are even available. Another one that we can look at is EBITDA. So we've seen an explosive growth in EBITDA and what we're gonna also do is take a look at the financial statements so we can really tear apart Tesla and figure out if it's really worth buying it now or not. You know, this has been a normal EBITDA of 64.83. And over this time frame, we've seen a compound annual growth rate of their EBITDA of 47%. I mean, look, 30% growth, 50% growth, 109% growth of EBITDA. And then we're expecting a slow growth this year for 2023, but then an explosive growth again for 2024 and 2025. Still, I feel like a 64 times EBITDA is slightly high. We'd probably want to be a little bit more conservative than that. And right now it's trading at a 53 times EBITDA. So one thing I want to do is go take a look at the financial statements and let's look at the last five years of financial statements. So we can see that the growth of sales, like we saw, has exploded. It's gone from 11 billion all the way up to 81 billion since 2017. And if we take a look at this chart, we can actually see some compound annual growth rate and total growth rate numbers of these values. So sales have seen a 47% compound annual growth rate, 592%. And like I said, one thing that we saw was that Tesla has gone from a unprofitable company to a way more profitable company. And here's where we'll take a look at that. So gross income has grown from 2.2 billion to 20 billion, right? So we've seen 840% total growth, 56% compound annual growth rate over this time. So that means that their sales is outpacing their cost of goods sold. So they're becoming more profitable there from a gross income standpoint. And then EBIT is now, we're starting to see some actual positive numbers. So EBIT was negative back here. And now we're starting to see some really large positive numbers. And that's because the gross income is outpacing the SGNA expense. So SGNA expense, well, gross income has grown at this 840%, 56% compound annual growth rate, while SGNA expense has only grown at a 12.7% or 8.2. So we see a massive outpace of its expenses essentially. And eventually we start to see that down at the very bottom line, right? Now we've gone, like EBIT, we've gone from a negative income all the way to a, a very large positive income in a short amount of time. You know, they're still dealing with other expenses and whatnot, but this company is becoming more and more profitable as we go. Another important thing to take a look at then is the cash flow statement. So just as it's becoming more profitable, its net operating cash flow is exploding. We've gone from a negative 61 million in net operating cash flow all the way to 14 billion. 
That is a 200% compound annual growth rate or 24,000% total growth rate. I mean, this company is exploding in terms of cash flow and even profitability. Its revenue is exploding, and we can see how they're funding it itself right now. They've got 14 billion here in night operating cash flow. They've used 12 billion in terms of capital expenditures, so 7 billion in capital expenditures. You know, this is slightly increasing expense they are spending a lot to keep growing the company and then they're making some investments and so it's mostly from some investments that they've made recently but from an investing standpoint it's their capital expenditures that is what is taking up a lot of their cash flow they're also supplementing themselves by selling stock right so they're actually issuing they back here they issued 12 billion in stock but what's nice to see is they're actually reducing debt so there's a bit of dilution happening, which is somewhat of a concern possibly for an investor. But as we're starting to see these higher rates, you know, they're issuing more stock and reducing that debt, which is nice to see. And then net financing cash flow is for the last few years been negative. So this is nice to see because less dilution is happening. And then they're actually, like I said, reducing debt. And we've been losing cash a little bit recently in the last few years, but big cash inflows have been fine. And let's go now take a look at the balance sheet to check out the cash and short-term investments. I mean, we've blown up from 3 billion of both of these up to 22 billion. I mean, that is a 538% growth, 44.87% growth. This firm is definitely very well capitalized. We're looking at 82 billion in assets, up from 28 billion. So assets are growing significantly. Liabilities have only grown from 23 billion to 36 billion. So let's take a look at that. That's a 9.6% compound annual growth rate, a 58% total growth rate. If we go compare that to total assets, that's 23% or 187%. So once again, 23% growth rate, compound annual growth rate versus a 9.62% total asset growth is significantly outpacing the total liabilities, which is even though the company is diluting, creating massive amounts of shareholder value, right? Total equity is assets minus liabilities. So equity has been growing nicely. Equity has been growing at a 52% compound annual growth rate. So once again, even though they are diluting, they are creating massive amounts of value for their shareholders. Now, finally, let's go take a look at the forecasting calculators. This is where it's like, can I buy this stock? Is this a good entry point for this stock? Does it need to come down in price? You know, what are we looking at? So this normal price to EBITDA ratio, that's just way too high. We need to kind of knock that down a little bit. We can take a look at some of these, like this is a 64 price to EBITDA ratio if we come look at the normal multiple. And we may even think that is not a conservative enough estimate. I mean, that is paying an extremely large multiple for a company like this. But even if we went from a 53 multiple down to a 32 multiple by 2025, you know, we're seeing a slight positive rate of return. If we go down to a 38 multiple, we are seeing a double digit rate of return at that point. I mean, that is not a bad rate of return, even if the multiple collapses quite a bit. And now this is where it's a little scary with EBITDA. We can look at the analyst scorecard and see that most of the time that the analysts have not been able to accurately predict the EBITDA per share of this company. So this is another reason why I wouldn't necessarily look at EBITDA. Looking at sales though, I think this is probably the best metric to look at Tesla on. Picking a conservative 8.7, remember they're trading at 9.48. I think 8.7 is slightly conservative and we can even play around with a couple of these values over here. But the analysts have done, I'll say pretty dang well for predicting this company's sales per share. They've beat it 50% of the time, meaning the company has beat the estimates that the analysts have predicted one year out and two years out 50% of the time, and then it's hit the analyst estimate 17% of the time. So we've only seen 33% of the time that the company's done worse one year out and 18% of the time that the company's done worse two years out. This gives them a little margin of error, 20% for two years and 10% for one year. We can also take a look at what the estimates are doing. So they've gone down from 32 to 31 to 31.49, and then we've kind of maintained that 
that. We've gone down from 41 to 39 here. And then we've actually gone up from 50 to 50.12. So the analysts are increasing their estimates here. And if we take a look now and run in some numbers about what some potential returns we could be with this 26.68 compound annual growth rate for the estimated sales. If it trades on this 8.7, we could be seeing a whopping 22% compound annual growth rate of your investment. I mean, that is an awesome return. If we pick some more conservative numbers like this 6.9, we're still seeing some double digit returns. So I think this company is an awesome position. They're obviously growing like a weed. They are constantly hitting their vehicle delivery numbers over and over and over again. And this company I think has finally rebuilt itself and really positioned itself to be an extremely good growth company. It's just the higher the multiple you pay, the higher the risk that you have. So as the stock price gets higher, you know, the risk and risk is going to get more and more. Doesn't mean you can't make money. Doesn't mean you can't continue to make money. But this seems to be, based off of sales specifically, a really good purchase point for Tesla. It could be better, but with the growth rate that we're seeing, I mean, you could be seeing some pretty nice returns. So that's a way to look at a company in fast graphs. That's how fast it is to look at a company in fast graphs. You can really speed up your investment research time. You can figure out if a company is even worth investing in, even if it's worth looking into. I mean, you can just look at so many different numbers and growth rates and things like that and collect all this data. It's such an awesome tool. I wouldn't be able to invest without it.